As a DJ, I wear a lot of different hats. I'm a therapist, observing the crowd, watching them react to the music, I make a diagnosis, I write up a prescription, and if I get it right, the person who came here tonight with a weight on their shoulders can lay down their burden and be free. I'm an archaeologist. I'm digging through the dusty ruins of secondhand stores and yard sales, unearthing precious nuggets of funk, rock, and jazz, shining a light on long forgotten gems. But the hat I enjoy wearing most is that of church minister, calling the faithful to the dance floor for another sweaty Sunday morning revival, <laughs> where we work together to make heaven on earth, if only for a couple of hours. There's a joke, a Venn diagram with three overlapping circles, one for DJs, one for, bank, one for preachers, and one for bank robbers. The bank robbers and the preachers, they say, give me all your money. <laughs> the bank robbers and the DJs, they say, everybody on the floor. <laughs> and all three of them say, put your hands up. <laughs> The DJs and the preachers, they say, are you with me? Let me take you back to where it all began. I grew up in a small town called Tilsenburg. My mom, Salvation Army officer, and my dad, German Catholic. I guess Baptist was a compromise between the two because that's where we worshiped. Maybe worship is too strong a word. We were more buttoned down. We always wore our Sunday best, and we never applauded after the music. We wanted to glorify God, not the singer. And I remember being disappointed when I learned that Baptists don't dance. They most definitely do not drink. <laughs> we still had fun, though. There were church picnics with that green jello dessert with the mini marshmallows inside. And I remember the people around me, the adults around me, always showing an interest in my well-being. But as I grew older, I sensed a tension growing inside of me. Being a good Christian meant acting a certain way, protecting yourself from bad influences. We were supposed to listen to the Christian versions of Green Day and Public Enemy. <laughs> These sanitized imitations were designed as a defense against the rising tide of the outside world. I could convince myself that these alternatives were just as cool as the real thing. But then reality would set in. I overheard my classmates making fun of my Christian t-shirts. I had this one with a snowboarder on it carving down a mountainside. And if you looked closely, you'd see the Bible verse cleverly hidden inside the flying snow. <laughs> Clever, but not cool. My mom loved musical theater, and my dad had an extensive record collection of rock and easy listening. I loved that music growing up, but as I got older, I yearned for music to call my own. And for me, that was hip hop and dance music. While everybody else was listening to Nirvana and Radiohead, I was listening to Belle Biv DeVoe and Two Unlimited. Those grimy funk samples, the, tch -tch -tch -tch, the record scratch, the four to the floor disco beats, all of this fully engaged my mind, body, and soul. This is music that made me want to move. The only problem was all the swear words. <laughs> all the lyrics about sex and drugs did not fit with the life of faith. So I devised some rules to help me to figure out what was safe. Three swear words was OK, but four swear words, that was too much. <laughs> and F-bombs were definitely out. So, hip hop has made its way to Tilsenburg, but club music, that's still a city thing. I'm hungry for this music, and the only way for me to hear it is listening to the radio late at night when I could pick up live to air broadcasts from the clubs in Toronto. This is where you hear the really cool stuff, the underground sound, techno from Detroit, house from Chicago, trance from Europe. And the best part, no lyrics, no swear words. <laughs> Just pure grooves, 
blended together by the one who controlled it all, the DJ. This is Chris Shepard, broadcasting live from RPM at the foot of Jarvis, Toronto, city of love. Are you with me? <laughs> Chris Shepard, he was my shining star in the east, my angel Gabriel, with a fake British accent. <laughs> but what was he doing? How was he doing it? What was this alchemical combination of art and science on two turntables and a microphone? I had to figure it out. The only problem was the internet didn't exist yet. So it would be years later when I was working at a college radio station that I would, when watching the other DJs spin records, that I would eventually figure out how it all works. <sighs> I'm shivering in my coat, just a t-shirt underneath. It'll be warm inside, but the bouncer, more mountain than man, is watching visual at the door. Then the thump begins. Bass so loud is coming through the concrete walls. A small cheer goes up from the crowd. A quick pat down from the security guard. I have a momentary flash of panic as he checks inside my shoes. But he doesn't find the caffeine pills that I stuffed inside my socks for a 4 a.m. pick-me-up. <laughs> Inside, the DJ is warming up the room. Old friends run up and hug each other, and others are leaning against the wall, nodding their heads to the beat. Fast forward a few hours, and the cavernous warehouse space is a heaving, sweaty mass of humanity, heads down, hands up, all expressing themselves in physical movements, both familiar and foreign. The air is thick with the smell of nicotine and Vicks vapor rub. We're all facing the same direction, in rough lines like pews. Human highways snake through the crowds, from bar to dance floor, dance floor to washrooms. The DJ is in his pulpit behind the turntables, flanked by pillars of speakers and lights like stained glass. His hands are all over the controls, twisting knobs and pushing sliders. His hand goes up, finger pointed to the sky. The bass cuts out, and the crowd takes a breather thankful for the rest, but anticipating what comes next. Even without the drums, our bodies are keeping the beat. Then a synth line cuts through the room, and the crowd cheers, and the crowd yells their approval as the music starts to build back up bit by bit. The hairs in the back of my neck are standing on end. The shiver runs through me like lightning. Everyone and everything is rising, levitating, up and up and up. And just when I think I can't take it anymore, and I'm going to die from the excitement, the bass drops in like a bomb and sends everyone rushing back to Earth. The crowd erupts a primal roar, and we're pounding the floor twice as hard. I want to do that. What the DJ just did for my friends and for others. I want to do that for the world. My reverie is interrupted. Some guy trying to get my attention, his oversized khakis dragging on the floor as he approaches. He's got a hoodie with the letters P-L-U-R in a big, bold font. Hey, buying, selling? I don't know what he's talking about at first. <laughs> What would I possibly want to buy in the middle of, oh, uh, no, no, thank you. I'm, I'm good. He looks at me, head tilted to the side, eyes narrowing. So what are you on? What are you taking? Uh, no, nothing. I'm sober. I'm bracing myself for a cruel sneer or a mocking laugh. But. He wraps me in his arms instead. I'm hugging a stranger in the middle of the dance floor. That's awesome, man. Sometimes all you need is the music. He turns to go, but I catch him. Wait, what, what does your shirt mean? Plur? Peace, love, unity, respect. A wink and a smile, and he's gone. I can't help but feel like I just passed a test. I'm in. I'm cool. <laughs> the 
It's Tuesday night, home church night. A dozen of us have gathered together in our host apartment to discuss this week's sermon. There's a buzz of conversation. A couple of girls in plaid shirts with metal snaps are promoting their folk band's upcoming show. There's a stylish guy with glasses and a slight Jamaican accent who's talking about the graffiti mural he just unveiled downtown. I've just moved to the city, but, well, at least my body has, but my spirit has only recently returned from the wilderness. My previous church had equipped me with a high contrast, black and white view of the world. I had my doubts that things were so simple, but I repeated the teachings and went through the motions anyways. I didn't like the way it was making me feel. I was putting a wedge between myself and my friends. I was second guessing what I should be listening to, what I should be watching. I was standing on shaky scaffolding, throwing pieces of myself over the sides with each new level that I built. And when the storms came, they smashed me into the ground, and I laid bewildered in the mud. I tried to leave the church. I despised this mold they were trying to squeeze me into. But here, here at this home church, here I feel like myself. I'm building again, using my own bricks this time, not somebody else's. Here I've found friends who are not only followers of Jesus, but who are also graphic designers, musicians, video editors. They're showing me how they live out their life in the real world, contributing to culture rather than running away from it. This home church, it's become my home and my church. It's not perfect, it's messy as hell. But this is where Jesus met me and showed me that the experiences I've had, my interests and passions, these are all things that can be used to bring good into the world. It's after 1 a.m., the party's still bumping. Coming out of a Stevie Wonder disco house bootleg and sliding smoothly into the latest samba tune single from Pitbull. The transition has the desired effect. There's a lot of hip shaking going on as people recognize the new groove. Everybody's got silly grins on their faces, unconscious of what they look like, and yet fully aware of how good it feels to move so freely in their own bodies. Eyes closed, hands out. I catch the eye of one of my old friends. We have a moment. We've been here a thousand times on a thousand nights. Always the same, always different. The world's a mess. People are hurting. There are so many needs to be ministered to. What can I do for the refugee grandmother? How can I support the single father? Encourage the young cancer patient. For me, the dance floor is what it looks like when we don't have to minister anymore. When God has brought healing and restoration to all things, we will take off our armor, leave our bunkers, and beat our swords into plowshares. The outsider will find community. The broken will be made whole and the weak will become heroes. This is the world that I'm striving for. It's just beyond my reach, but not beyond my sight. So, are you with me?